Aboriginal TV Channel 4. Putting Aboriginal news first. The COVID-19 crisis has had a huge impact on the way we live, work and do business. Indigenous communities across the globe and in Australia have also experienced an unprecedented level of disruption and distress. Federal Minister for Indigenous Australians, Ken Wyatt AM, has worked hard to ensure that Indigenous communities are protected as much as possible from the COVID-19 pandemic. These efforts have included an active collaboration with the Northern Territory Government. So please stay where you are. That's where you're safest. And do what you do best, look after each other. The focus has also been turned toward the impact and long-term implications for First Nations businesses and tourism. Dr Donna Odegaard AM, CEO of Aboriginal TV Channel 4, has had a long connection to the progress and success of Indigenous business and leadership. Allow the children or the families or the, you know, the leaders of the community to put their views and thoughts on the table. Among her many responsibilities is the co-chair of the National Indigenous Voice co-design group. Now, on an international platform, Dr Odegaard recently took part in a series of forums discussing the impact of COVID-19 on Indigenous business and tourism in Australia and around the world. Indigenous leaders globally are collaborating and looking at ways to ensure that we have policies and support mechanisms in place to protect Indigenous business and the tourism sector. The recent discussions included leaders of global international tourism from the US and Canada. One of the other key speakers was Keith Henry, who's the President and CEO of Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. They've taken quite an aggressive approach to help uh, Indigenous businesses with expenses or micro-loans and things like that. Coronavirus infections and deaths are ripping through the Navajo Nation, located in three different states, with an already vulnerable population. Coordinating care and information is not easy. The community has taken on the challenge of caring for their own people. We're encouraging our elders to share their stories, the stories of our culture, our tradition, and our language, so that our young people don't remember this time as a scary moment. This is, in a way, what we've been praying for, to reunite families, to reunite couples, to hand down our language, our culture, tradition to the next generation. Our freed a little bit of the Navajo Nation mentioned the fact that there's this whole uh, renewal of culture, language. You know, they're doing their native crafts they're going back to their basic cultural roots. My descendants, I want them to be proud of who they are, to be proud of being Kia'ani, to be proud of being Diné. Rounding off the international discussions was some valued input from New Zealand. Dr Odegaard has long had a close working relationship with Maori leaders, collaborating on Indigenous business issues. The Australian contribution to the discussions was well covered by a diverse and experienced team. We've got people like Laura Berry of Supply Nation, Josh Riley of the Business Council of Australia. We pretty much discussed the same things, you know, what a post-COVID Indigenous business uh, and indeed Indigenous tourism sector would look like. As we prepare for what has been called the new normal of a post-COVID-19 world, the ongoing international collaboration of Indigenous people will be what drives the future progress, culture, health and prosperity of First Nations people. It's all about caring for our people first, but to be prepared for coming out the other side of the COVID, in whatever that means for individuals or groups or communities, Aboriginal TV Channel 4, putting Aboriginal news first.